that it, it works really well. I am able to get um, almost uh, 55 millimeters of travel, which is what some of the manual says. I know that probably will be too much, but that's what I get. So here's your control surface. So if you look at this, you can see that uh, the positioning of this rod is a little bit asymmetrical. It's not quite in the center of the aerofoil. And that's, I think, intentional. So there's a little bit less room up here than there is down here. And that's intentional. So on this jet, the side with the less room, that goes towards the, uh, the vertical stab or the rudder. And then the side with more room goes towards the bottom of the plane. If you put this on the other side, then uh, the control horns will have like a weird um, direction because you can see this is keyed, so you should only be able to install those control horns in, in one way. Anyway, so that's part one. Part two is you get uh, four of these, I think these are fiberglass bushings or washers, and what I decided to do is mount one in between the stab and the bearing, um, and then the second one will go on the inside in between the bearing and the control horn. And I need one between the stab and the bearing of the fuse so that I can have that room, that slight gap in there to allow for this to rotate um, with enough room as much as possible. So basically this is going to go on top of here, but when these come, at least mine came, they're really, they're really a tight fit. So what I'm going to do is take some sandpaper or an exacto and open that up so that they can fit through the shaft and go all the way to the bottom. Okay, so. so that is done and you can see now that ring fits nice and smoothly. So I'm going to insert that in there. The bearing is already in place. You get four of these in the kit. Um, I used two, one on this and one on the other side of there. And so now this can slide into here. There's another bearing on the inside. Let's see if I can... Nice. So that's in place and you can see that sort of bushing in there and that's sufficient to give me this nice gap around here so that when this rotates it's not contacting the fuselage at all. Okay so here's uh, something that I saw when I was installing this is that you can see on this side I've put the bushing in but then the flat spot doesn't quite extend all the way to the end. That's my son. He's letting me work on this stuff. Thank you Dylan. So it's important, the reason that's key is because if that flat spot doesn't get to the end, well then when you, when you close this, you leave a gap and that means that the control surface can move and I don't want that. So Trying to get to the fan. So Obama, fixing this fan was such a good idea because now it keeps him cool and occupied. And I'm just going to grind this additional surface away so that when this guy gets mounted on here, it can go all the way to the end and the flat spot will, have, will not have to grab any round surface. Okay, so now we can see I have added that extra, I've ground it all the way to just underneath the washer and so now the the flat spot on the arm will be able to go all the way and lock this in place. So I'm gonna prepare the screws. Remember, you gotta use your Loctite. Don't forget that. This is an important control surface. So I'm gonna Loctite all four screws, and then I'll install them on the uh, on the elevator rod. Now, I find that you want a wrench with a ball end like that because some of these can, can be at an angle, so. All right, so this, that's nice and tight. That's looking good. Um, so I just took these guys out because I realized um, that what I wanna do is, this is what comes with the kit, these clevises, um, but this hole seems a little too tight. Um, for these guys to fit in. But while I was at it, I decided that I'm actually gonna use these metallic uh, ton buckle style 
connectors that I've used throughout the plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to drill out this hole uh, to match about an M3, the size of an M3 screw, which is about 2.7-ish millimeters, um, because this is going to accept an M3, and then I'm going to use a lock nut on the other end. So it's going to look something like that. Um, M3 is going to go through here and on this end I'm going to have a lock nut bolt. Now the threading on the stock threads is not compatible with, with this stuff which is fine. Um, this threading is however compatible with this. So those two um, work together well because this is a hot area um, and I really want good precise elevator control I'm going to use these guys. So here's what I ended up with. Yeah, and that screw is about 18.67 millimeters end to end. So that uh, is a setup that I'm going to be going with, and I like it. So I'm going to mount this back in here, and there we have it. So, so that is complete, and now all I need to do is, once my turnbuckles get in, I'm going to screw them in here, put the servo, and uh, the elevators or the stabulators are going to be complete. Here's how I mounted the elevator servers. Um, I think it was a pain in the ass, but I figured out a way. So I put my servo on aluminum L mounts like that. Um, and the reason is I wanted to actually puncture this piece of wood um, as few times as possible, rather, remove us low amount of material as possible so you I could have cut into this and had the servo stick in like that but I didn't want that so uh, when you put the aluminum mounts however you find that in order to line up with the control horn the servo has to go fairly far in into the fuselage now how are you gonna drill that it's a pain in the butt because you either have to have a way to get through the fuselage so you drill through the fuselage to get in or because I, I honestly don't know in this. so what I had to do is use this mount get up like a sharpie or something then put the marks on the fuselage if you flip it over then from the top of the plane because this is the bottom to this particular piece of wood there's enough room to get one of these angled Dremel brackets in and a bit so what I want is to have M3 screws going from top through a piece of wood and then secure it on the bottom with lock nuts. Um, and that is really steady without really removing a lot of material. So I widened out the bottom holes so that they can accept M4 screws. And I'm gonna get long enough screws that they go through this plate and get secured on the bottom with lock nuts. So it's gonna look something like this and then a lock nut with the washer on the bottom. And I like that because it's easy to, to, to remove for service, but it also really holds this in place and makes it such that I don't have to cut out any unnecessary material from this. So the elevator servo is mounted and it's a very sturdy setup. So you can see, uh, let's zoom out a little bit here, that it, it works really well. I'm able to get um, almost uh, 55 millimeters of travel, which is what some of the manual says. I know that probably will be too much, but that's what I get, and that's good. All metal, metal servo, metal arm, metal ton buckle. So with the heat that's going to be coming through the pipe, if any, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so here's the top side of the servo. You can see... Um, the washers and lock nuts and um, there's four of them I used longer M4s uh, closer to the fuselage end just because when I drilled the hole it had to be at an angle so it's not quite orthogonal in that piece of wood so I figured something longer will work but that's uh, that's all good uh, elevator servo installation is complete Okay, so my elevators are complete, but I noticed something interesting that the one of my elevators had sort of lateral play in that axis and I was wondering where that was coming from and then I checked and in here you have this uh, ball bearing holding device and it's bolted down 
to sort of that plate by two uh, bolts and these bolts are secured um, you can kind of see that right there and they're secured on the underside by lock nuts make sure to check those because mine was sort of loose so I'm gonna go over and tighten tighten those uh, because you do not want that to be loose at all so now that uh, I've tightened them I think I can say that my elevator stuff is complete so there's one there's a second one I've tightened my uh, ball bearing holders and I'm good to go